It is rude to ignore one such as me, even if I make you want to flee. I have felt the dark times fall over your land, what has happened under Celestia's command. I looked in utter confusion at the pony in front of me, my mind unable to comprehend what was going on. How the hell was it possible for something like this to happen? I've never heard of any kind of magic that was able to change another creature into something else. But standing right in front of me was none other than Aura. She sounded different. She didn't have that raspy voice I was used to. Instead, her voice was a little higher than normal, but I could still tell it was hers. Her eyes were the most notable thing on her. Her coloring was almost the same, also. Yeah, of course it's me. What the hell's wrong with you? She said, then gave off a small groan. I don't know what that killing joke did to me, but I can't feel my talons. Did I lose them? She started to look down at her hooves, and I watched as her annoyed expression went from a little pissed off to utter panic. I stepped closer to her. Aura, you're going to be okay. The killing joke turned you into... well, a pony? She screamed. Where the hell are my talons? Why am I shorter? What the hell's going on? A hoof went up to her muzzle, and she gasped. My voice sounds... Ah, where's my beak? Aura, calm down! I yelled, then slapped her. Listen to me. The killing joke turned you into a pony. Now stop screaming and calm down. Her eyes went wide as she looked down at her hooves again. I'm a... Pony? Then she started to giggle, sounding a little insane. I'm a fucking pony? She giggled a little more insanely. <laughs> yeah, great. That makes sense. Because why not? I guess it's just fucking funny to see those stupid plants. Yep, because all this makes sense. She looked down at her hooves again, then back at her pegasus wings. Giggled one more time, then her eyes rolled into the back of her head and she passed out, her energy spear falling off her back as she did. I moved closer. Aura? Sunspot stopped me. She just passed out from the shock. That's probably for the best. We need to get out of here. I looked over at her. Why are you here anyway? I thought you said it would take longer for you to lose the Enclave. It did. We left you about six hours ago, she said. Six hours? How could that be? We just left the forest a few minutes ago, I said. Solstice groaned from a few feet away. It's been ages since you and Aura passed out, Shadow. I was able to use some meds I have to keep myself alive from the bullet wound. But I've been waiting for you to wake up for a long time. And they just showed up a few minutes ago. I looked up at the sky and noticed it was a lot darker than before, and I could barely make out the cloud cover overhead. Crap, I had no idea. It felt like it was only for a moment. Did you get hit by the killing joke? Sunspot asked. I had to think back for a moment and then nodded. Only for a second. I think one of the vimes slapped me in the face. Elliot came over and started to look me over. I can't see anything different about you, but Killing Joke can do more than just change something about how you look. We'll have to check you over once we're back on the ship, after I get a chance to look over Solstice. Where's the ship? I asked. Just overhead. Gunny's hiding it under the overhang, with a, a lot of brush around it. He deflated the balloon and is keeping the power off. We're going to stay there for a little while till the Enclave's given up the chase for us, Sunspot said. We're just lucky to have found you before one of the patrols did. We've seen at least six since we've been looking for you. I moved over to Solstice, who looked pale. She had a lot of blood crusted over her armor, and her wing looked like it was in bad shape. How are you feeling? I asked. She groaned and said, About as bad as I look, I'm losing feeling in my wing. Don't worry. I've seen a few injuries like that before, and I know how to deal with them. You'll be fine, Elliot said as he walked over to her. Come on, I'll carry you. Sonny, you carry Aura. Shadow can follow. 
Sounds fine with me, as long as my wings mended, Solstice said, as she tried to get to her hooves and failed. Here, I'll help you, I said, using my magic to slowly lift her off the ground and place her on Elliot's back. She gave me a grateful smile, something I hadn't seen on her face before. I smiled back as she said, Thanks, Shadow. As soon as the words left her lips, a flash of memory flew through my mind. I shut my eyes and shook my head. Instead of seeing what I expected to see, I watched as Misery sliced open her neck, a look of shock on Solstice's face as I ended her life. I shook my head again. Another memory of the two of us laying with each other at the her place and cartwheel. Us laughing, kissing, enjoying the time we had together during the show she was in town. And then again, I saw her falling to the floor as the Reaper Pony claimed her. Shadow, are you okay? I heard Sunspot nearby, her paw shaking my shoulder. I blinked and the memories faded away. Looking over at her, I tried my best to smile, saying, Yeah, don't worry about me, because I'm just a little dazed after that slap I took from the killing joke. Sunspot shrugged, then went off to pick up Aura's unconscious body. Solstice, however, was looking at me oddly. It was almost like she knew I was hiding something. She let her eyes glare into mine for a few moments, then finally she looked away. Okay, pony, bird, thing, let's get back to the ship, she said. Best thing I've heard all day, but you can just call me Elliot, Elliot said. It took us about a half an hour to get back to the bitter cob, which was in fact tucked under a rocky overhang. The large balloon was lying on the deck, fully deflated, and the ropes that held it to the ship neatly rolled up next to it. Some brush was placed around in spots on the ship as well, making it so no pony from the sky would notice it. Captain Gunny might be mad, but he wasn't stupid. Okay, not that stupid. At least when it came to hiding and being a pirate. I guess. About time you be getting back here with Gunny's passenger and the two stowaways. Gunny said with a mad smile as we climbed a gangplank. <clears throat> stowaways. Elliot said as he move towards the captain cabins with uh, Solstice still on his back. Call yourself crazy or mad all you want, but even you should be able to know what that word is, you moron. Ah, now, Elliot, Gunny be talking of licenses to that, Gunny said with a glare to the pony griffin. Elliot chuckled to himself and responded, Well, good thing you aren't the captain at the moment. And then he looked towards Sunspot, who wasn't far behind me. Hey, Captain, can I call Gunny a moron? I call him one at least ten times a day, so feel free, Sunspot said as we, she went to put Aura in our room. Hey, now, Gunny said he was sorry, didn't he? You can't keep saying that Sonny be the captain, he said with a huff. We'll see, as... How you only have two crew members and three passengers, and all of us still don't want to trust you yet. And then I say, you don't have much say in the matter, Elliot said, then went into his own room with Solstice. Gunny sighed, then looked over at me. You don't think old Gunny be a bad pony, do you, Shadow? I shrugged. Don't ask me. I don't trust any pony most of the time. Fine. Be that way. At least Gunny still be having the bigger cabin, he said, then stomped away in a huff. I just shook my head and went to follow Sunspot. When I got into the room, I saw Aura was now lying on the bed in Sunspot's cabin. I looked at the pony griffin, asking, Is there some way we can wake her up? I was just about to do that. Let's just hope she's calmer now, she said, pulling something from her desk. She cracked it open and placed it under Aura's nose. Two seconds or so later, Aura jerked awake, looking around wildly. What the hell is that? Smelling salts, Sunspot said, tossing a small item into a bin on the other side of the room. I could just make out a slight ammonia smell from it passing by. Where are we? Why do I feel so strange? Aura asked. Back on the ship, you passed out dress side of, just outside of the Everfree. Sunspot said, sitting on the floor next to the bed. Oh, yeah. I almost forgot about that dream. I had a weird dream, though. About... She stopped talking and looked down at her body. It... 
was in a dream. I moved over to her before she could start freaking out again. Aura, you're okay. The killing joke just pulled a prank on you. I'm sure you'll be fine. Aura closed her eyes and took in a few deep breaths. She did this for a couple of minutes. When she opened her eyes, she looked a lot calmer. No, I won't. Healing joke has no cure that we know of. Some of the jokes do wear off over time, if the joke isn't funny anymore. But most of the time, it kills you or you're stuck like that. You mean, you're stuck like this? She nodded. Most likely. Unless some pony came up with a cure for it in the last six months. But the last I heard, no pony has. Sunspot looked over, then said, I don't see the killing part of this joke. Aura looked at her hooves and raised a brow. Being a pony means I can't fight. At least not how I was trained to. My talons are my main way of fighting. Either using my claws to fight, or using my spear. Or other weapons that griffins use to fight. Like this, I'm more useless than a foal. I wouldn't say useless. You just need to learn how to fight with your new body. I said, and as I spoke, I couldn't take my eyes off the strange sight of Aura as a pony. I wasn't even sure if I missed her griffin form or if I liked this one better. Both were beautiful, but something about her as a pony just felt... normal, I guess? I was going to tell her that, though. She'd overreact and think I didn't like her as a griffin. She looked back at me and sighed. I know that, but it's not something that I can just pick up overnight. It's going to take time, and who knows what'll happen if we're stuck all the way out here away from the rest of our friends. Miura I knew wouldn't give up like that. Hell, when I just left my stable, I didn't know the first thing about how to fight, and look at me now. You'll be just fine. It just takes as much time as you need to learn how to use your body to its fullest. I said, moving over to kiss her on the cheek. She got to her hooves and spread her wings. Yeah, you're right. And I can't let something like this get me down. She looked over at Sunspot. Got any weapons I can use to practice with? I think so. She replied, looking a little confused. Good. I'm going to take the time while we're waiting around here to get to work. Aura said, then she tripped on her hooves, smacking her face on the floor. Ow. I couldn't help a small laugh that came out as I said, Maybe you need to learn to walk first, then work on fighting. She glared over at me. You're lucky that I love you. Even if you didn't, right now I'm stronger than you. I said, laughing harder. Anyway, I'm going to dive into one of those memory crystals. I need to see if there's anything in them that can help us. You're going to do what? Aura yelled. Diving into a memory crystal? Don't worry. I'll be fine. Just come check up on me when you're finished training, I said, finding a comfortable spot in Sunspot's room. But you said those things are dangerous, Aura said, trying to convince me. I looked back at her. They are, but I know what I'm doing. Just check up on me when you're finished. I don't know how long this will take. If I'm still not out by the time we're ready to leave, then just get us going. Aura tried to argue more, but I shoved her out of Sunspot's room. Go. Have fun learning about your new temporary body. I shut the door and dug into the saddlebags I'd gotten from Charity. Then I moved over to the bed and dumped everything onto it. I was a little amazed at how much stuff I was able to collect over the past few days. Nothing worth much, really. Just a few odds and ends, some ammo, a few caps. The letter I meant to throw away. I'd forgotten I kept that. Oh well, me having almost, like, throwing it away for glory, I guess. It's not like I'm going to meet Blackjack in the future. I picked up the larger envelope and put it into my other saddlebags. With that done, I looked at the rest of what I'd collected. A few guns, the spell book from the base, the box with the wing blades in them, and at last, the memory crystal. I picked it up with my hooves and pushed the rest of the stuff to the side of my magic, setting it all on the small desk. Setting it back down onto the bed, I moved over to lay down next to it, 
wondering what it was going to be like to enter this thing, I took a moment to think back. I remembered Minette doing a spell to make the crystal she had glow and show the weird colors over it. I could almost remember the spell and how she did it, but not enough to risk trying it yet. There has to be a way for me to pull that memory again, I said to myself. It was too bad that the memory I needed wasn't in an orb. It had been transferred to me by a piece of my grandmother's memories inside Lacuna. Maybe if I used the same memory orb on myself, I'd be able to pull it up. Is it even possible to do a memory spell on yourself? Well, I wouldn't know until I tried. So I pulled up my magic and cast a spell over my own mind. At first, nothing happened, but then with a snap, the world melted away. A little later, I gasped as I left the memory. I guess I can make myself remember things with that spell. Good to know. Some of what happened in it, making me tear up a little. Remembering that this memory took place only a day or two before my grandmother lost her mare friend. I took a moment to settle down, then looked at the crystal. The spell she used was similar to the one used to trap and release Uncle Ori in that crystal. I was sure I knew how to do the spell now. I could feel myself shaking as I readied my magic, and with a flash of my horn, I cast the spell over the crystal. It only took a moment, and the crystal started to glow and appeared right in the air. Over it were eight colored lights. An odd sensation came over me as I held onto the spell. First, I noticed that small tendrils of magic were splitting off from my horn and reaching for the lights. With just a thought, I could make them move forward or back. This must be what I had to do to unlock the crystal. Second was a voice that seemed to echo around the small room. It was rich and powerful, with a hint of amusement behind it. It was a mare's voice. One that seemed ancient and wise. You have activated a document of my life. A slice of my history now lay in your hooves. One who dares to dig into the past be warned. Only one with great power and a steady heart can enter a memory of mine. I give you this one chance to pull back. If you do not, you might be trapped within my memories for the rest of your life. If you know you can deal with the strain that comes from watching this, then please give me the code and watch one of the worst mistakes I've ever made, the mayor's voice said. It was unlike anything I had ever felt before with a memory orb. Was I strong enough to deal with this? Could I escape once I was inside of it? Maybe, maybe not. But one thing was for sure. Night Stalker wanted me to find something at his base, and this might be it. So, with a deep sigh, I moved the tendrils of magic forward and entered the code I'd seen written on the terminal. Blue, violet. Red, blue, red. Yellow, orange, green. As soon as I tapped the last color, the door to the room opened, and I saw Aura flying in, saying, Shadow, I really think you should wait to enter that. Shadow? No! I never heard what she was going to say, because right then, everything I was vanished in a haze of black and gold light. My mind split. My body seemed to disappear. Everything about who I was, or what I was, erased as I fell into the mind of another. The world didn't melt away. It shattered. Moonlight! Moonlight! Wake up! Now is not the time to be passing out! We're in the middle of a war! I heard a griffin say, his talons shaking me awake like our lives depended on it. Our queen needs us! I shook my head and opened my eyes. I looked up at his worried face. Strange, a moment ago I could have sworn I was in a cabin of a flying ship. But no, that must have been some kind of strange dream. I'm not sure what it was, but I have to pull myself together. War? What war? Our queen? I said warily. What happened? How long was I out? Who are you again? You must have hit your head pretty hard when you passed out. Never mind. It's me, Jeff. You've been out for about five minutes, ma'am. We were just discussing our battle plans against Celestia's forces when you passed out. Worried, so I brought you back to our tent. Platinum Sky took charge while I left you over, Jeff said. I thought about it for a moment. Then, something jolted my memory. 
I hit my hoof with the other. That's right. Now I remember. I looked back to Jeff. Sorry, Jeff. I've been working myself into the ground, I said with a nervous laugh. Damn right you have, he responded. It was then that I noticed I was in the tent I shared with Jeff. It wasn't much compared to our room at headquarters, but as long as I was with him, even a blanket over the top of the dirt was better than being alone. What am I thinking? Not enough time for this right now. Our queen would be here soon, and if we didn't have a plan ready for our assault on the castle of the two sisters... Thank you for pulling me away like this, you did, my love. But I'm fine. Now, we need to get back to what we're going to combat. Celestia, I said, heading towards the tent flaps. <clears throat> Moonlight, you just passed out for an unknown reason. You should rest and let the others take care of this. Jeff said as I made my way back to a small trail leading towards the command tent. No. What I need to do is make sure everything's ready for this last attack. You know what's at stake, Jeff. I said as I pushed through the command tent's flaps. Platinum Sky, I need an updated report on the numbers Celestia has of the castle. Moonflower, what's the status of the Bat Pony Guard? Calming Seas? Where's Calming Seas? Cold Front, go find Calming Seas and make sure he didn't get lost in the forest. My team looked at me for a long moment. Almost like I just walked in on something personal. The tall Pegasus buck with a metallic coat and silver eyes looked over at the rest of them, then back at me. Finally, Pegasus Sky spoke. Moonlight, you just had some kind of episode. You passed out for a few minutes. You need to rest. Let us deal with this. We still have time before the attack. Moonflower, the Pegasus mare with a flowing lilac mane and a black and white coat looked over at me with her aura colored eyes and she looked in concern as she asked what happened to you moon yeah you gave us all a scare there for a moment ma'am cold front said she was a pegasus mare with a white and reddish orange mane and a navy blue coat her mane was cut short to keep it out of her eyes when she flew she was one of my strongest fighters and my best friend I'll be fine. I just didn't get enough to eat today. I'll be sure to do something before our meeting with the Queen is finished. Now, I need my reports, and I still want to know where Calming Seas is. I said, keeping my tone light, but still with a bit of command to it. Right here, ma'am. I heard Calming Seas say as he walked into the tent. He was a shorter buck with an almond-colored mane, and his coat color of the sea and eyes that matched. Cold Front was my best friend, but Calming Seas was my favorite teammate. Next to Jeff, that is, but that's for other reasons. I smiled as he walked past me, a scroll under his wing. What'd you learn from the castle? Celestia is planning something, but I couldn't find out what. I was able to sneak into the throne room a little while ago, and I overheard her saying something about some crystals she can use to defeat the queen he said, laying the scroll down. I also mapped out where her personal guard is and was able to poison their water, but I only used a small amount of helix leaf so they would only fall asleep. You said you didn't want me to kill them. Platinum sighed, saying, This matches the numbers we got from our scouts half an hour ago. We also found another 50 unicorns just north of the castle, but I think that they're only the rear guard. Also, one of our scouts, who went to follow Celestia's guard captain, didn't report back in. He's now classified as MIA, with the possibility of being KIA. Where was he headed before you lost the scout? I asked. Towards the cave below the castle, Platinum replied. What would he be doing down there? I asked. A regal voice flowed through the tent, opening just then. Queen Nightmare Moon herself walked in her mane of darkness flowing around her as she looked down at all of us. If I know my sister the way I think I do, then she's most likely hidden the elements of harmony down there. She believes that she can keep them from me, as if I needed her pathetic power after what I've gained. We all made a quick bow to her, then I said, My queen, if 
Celestia is trying to trick us into thinking that she's hiding them. What if she's planning to use them against you? <laughs> then my sister is a real fool than I thought. She cannot wield the elements without me. Even if she could, it would cost her dearly. I also know that power of gain. She's no match for me now. Once we storm the castle, I will finally complete control of Equestria. Nightmare Moon said, cackling. That sound made me shiver in fear. I was loyal to Princess Luna for all the help she'd given us over the years. And, even like this, she was still my queen. My princess. Almost like a mother to me. But it was still unsettling. That wasn't the Luna I knew. I could still remember the days when she used to laugh with her sister, when she would bring the moon to the sky, when she was happy. Over the years, though, I'd watch her slowly fall into a deep depression over the ponies of Equestria. I couldn't appreciate her beautiful night sky. Maybe if she wins this war, she'll come back to us and stop sinking deeper into that dark place that she was currently trapped in. Though I know the deep down that she wasn't going to become our lunar again. We all bowed again to her, crossing our right forelegs over our chests, saying as one, May the night forever run free. Nightmare Moon grinned down at all of us. My children, you have served me well for all these years. Now I'm asking you to help me take back what is rightfully mine. Will you stand with me? Forever, my queen, we all replied in unison. Good. Now, go prepare the assault. We strike at the witching hour, Nightmare Moon said. With another bow, we all started to head out of the tent. I was leading our unit out when Nightmare Moon said, Moonlight, I'd like a word before you set out. Yes, my queen, I said, stopping next to the tent flap as the rest shuffled out. Jeff stopped on his way out and leaned down to my muzzle to nuzzle my cheek for a moment. I'll see you soon. I smiled at his warm affection, watching as he followed cold front. For a moment, I remember the day I first met him many years ago when I was guarding Princess Luna on a trip to the Griffin Empire. Jeff didn't like me much back then. We both were headstrong and believed in our respective leader's way of seeing the world. I almost blasted his head off that day when he said something derogatory about unicorns. But after that trip, I was sent back a few more times on behalf of the princesses. Well, cold front and myself, anyway. We told the Griffin Empire that we were on a diplomatic mission to set up trade agreements with Griffinstone. In reality, we were hunting down a runaway pony who'd stolen something from Luna. Jeff was the captain of the guard back then and assigned to watch over us while we were in their lands. At first, I hated having the griffin follow me around, but over time, I came to respect him. He showed me a lot of the beautiful sights around their land. He explained a lot about their culture and their beliefs. I spent six months in the griffin lands hunting down that pony and a few others that followed him, and over time, I developed feelings for him. On the last night I was there, a few hours before I found and killed the pony I'd been hunting down, Jeff took me to a place he loved, going when he had free time. A place called Aurora's Twin Peaks. It was a sight like none I'd seen in my life, and it was then that he told me that he loved me. Since that day, my heart was his. I knew it would always be until the day I died, or even longer than that. If their belief in reincarnation were true, then I'd find him in every life. He gave me hope that the future was bright and good, even during these troubling times. Even though he was banished from his homeland for sharing so much with me about the Griffins, he never blamed me. You always get that faraway look around you when that Griffin's around you, Nightmare Moon said. I jumped, then looked back at her terrifying presence. My heart beats for him, my queen. I know it does, and that is why I've let you continue this relationship with him, even though I find it strange. I remember that it is like to fall for another, Nightmare Moon said. I suppose we all do, my queen, I replied. Tis a story for another time. Maybe once I win, I'll have time to tell you about it. For now, I have a job for you, she said. I live to serve, I said with another bow. I know you do. Ever since I took you in when you were a filly, you've always been loyal. 
That is why I'm entrusting this to you and only you, she said, starting to pace around the tent, her horn just brushing against the top fabric. What is it you need of me? I asked, watching as she paced. It is two things that I need from you. The first is that I'm sending you into the castle with Moonflower. Once inside, you will steal the elements of harmony from my sister. You need to make sure no pony sees you. If Celestia finds any of my children of the night near her throne, she'll kill you herself, Nightmare Moon said. Eyes went wide for a moment. I didn't think that Celestia was capable of killing any pony. She does not like to, and she will almost always do her best not to end a life. But she knows that my power is greater than hers, and she will do what she must to keep the elements safe, she said, looking back at me. I know I said that I do not fear her being able to use them, and I'm sure she can't, but I will not risk my life on a hunch. And what will we do after we uh, capture the elements? I asked. You will then kill the traitor within this unit. I believe that it might be Moonflower. She's been questioning my power since I took this new form, and I don't like it. Once you are in that castle, I want you to watch for signs that she's a traitor, and if so, I want you to end her life. Nightmare Moon said. It felt like my heart stopped as she said those words. I looked up into those turquoise eyes and saw nothing but anger in them. Luna, Nightmare Moon, was asking me to kill a member of my unit. Some pony I grew up with. She was like a sister to me. Why would she think Moonflower was the pony who betrayed her? Moonflower was kind-hearted. She'd always been loyal to Luna. Always. And I mean, yes, she was worried that Nightmare Moon was acting different than when we were used to with Luna. But I can't see her being the traitor. I know she's not the traitor. I'm waiting for an answer, Moonlight. Nightmare Moon said. If I say no, she'd kill me here and now. So I did the only thing I could. I bowed my head. Yes, my queen. It shall be done. Good. Now be gone and start heading towards the castle. You have five hours before we start the final assault. Nightmare Moon said before she walked out of the tent. It took me a moment to move. It felt like my hooves were made up of butter as I finally was able to force myself out of the tent. It only took me a moment to find Moonflower, who was going over the battle plan with Jeff. I made my way over to her, saying, Moonflower, I need your help. We have a mission. She looked over at me. I thought we were setting up for the assault. The rest of our forces and the others can deal with that. We've got something more important to do. Our queen wants you to come with me and watch my back. I said, looking over at Jeff. Your second in command while I'm away. Paladin Sky will lead, and I need you to make sure the others listen to him. Can you do that for me? I do as I must. You make sure to stay safe while you're away. And just make sure to come back to me in one piece. He said. I'll be fine. I'll have Moonflower with me. I said. I don't understand why she's sending me. A cold front or one of the others would be better on a mission to watch your back than me, she said. True, but you're one of the best stealth operatives we have. Even better than me, and where we're going, I'll need stealth. Now get your stuff, and let's go. We don't have long, I said. Yes, ma'am. I'll be right back, she said, running to her tent to get her things. While she was gone, Jeff came over to me, asking... You look scared. What's going on? I shook my head. I can't tell you. You can tell me anything, my love. We're bonded, and we keep nothing from each other. He said, referring to the ceremony Griffin's had in place of marriage. It was hard to believe that was six months ago now. I know. But this is an order from Queen Nightmare Moon. I can't talk about it until later. Just please let it go, and if I will, I'll tell you about it later. I said. Moonlight, something's wrong. I can tell. What did she ask you to do? He asked. I looked over at Moonflower, who was just coming out of our tent, and felt a stab in my heart. I said before. I can't tell you. He followed my gaze and let out a soft sigh. 
I understand, he said, then pulled me into a hug, whispering. If what she told you is what I'm thinking, then you need to watch your back. She can't find out the truth. Not ever. I know, my love. Just keep everything here going smoothly, and I'll see you when this is all over. I said, doing my best to hold back my pain. If you have to, you know, put an end to Moonflower to keep the rest of us safe, then make it quick. She deserves that much as least, he said before letting me go. I'll try, I said, backing away from him and turning towards Moonflower, who was just getting back. Ready to go, ma'am, she said, looking a little scared. Good. Let's go. I said, heading towards the path that would take us around the castle in the distance. She followed. Where are we going? To the castle. We're going to steal the Unless of Harmony. Nightmare Moon wants to make sure Celestia can't use them. Once we're done with that, we'll be heading away from here to make sure Celestia can't get to them. We have five hours before she starts the assault. I said as I pushed past the guards in our camp and headed for the dark woods of the Everfree. But how are we going to do that? Celestia isn't like most ponies. She'll know we're in the castle. Even if we can get around her wards and her magic, how do you plan to steal something we know she'll have close to herself? Moonflower asked. I let my horn glow, my magic a pale light, saying, I'm one of the most powerful unicorns to ever be born in Equestria since Celestia and Luna themselves. I can get around her magic. So stop asking me stupid questions, and let's get moving. We don't have a lot of time. Moonflower nodded. Yes, ma'am.